Okay, so we're moving on to think about lesson three, which is friction. And you can start by having to think about why the surfaces feel friction. So if you even think about a very simple, smooth surface, um, like glass there, um, it looks very smooth, but once you actually zoomed in, actually it's not quite as smooth as it looks, but it's, it's what's happening between the two that cause the issues. Um, also, you could think about old fashioned cars and the turbulence they create, and modern cars and how modern cars are a little bit more streamlined um, and what that means. So we're looking at air resistance, friction. We've got to be able to define friction, experimentally determine the factors that affect friction, analyze the factors that have the biggest effect, try and think about turbulence and clean air. Now, uh, if you're in class, you could look at the Jeremy Clarkson video, which isn't available online, unfortunately. Uh, it's quite a long one. It looks at the ideas of Concorde, how there's friction between the air and the plane itself, that gets the plane very hot, so they have to pump lots of uh, cool fluid around the skin of the plane to stop it overheating, otherwise literally you will cook inside the plane. Um, you could think about planes in general and how they're streamlined, that they are obviously cutting through the air, they're hitting air, and that streamlining does actually help the planes to become more fuel efficient. Uh, a football, when you kick a football, so that's a picture of David Ginola, he's a little bit of an older footballer, um, when you kick the ball on one side, you create differences in pressure, but it's all about the friction between your foot and the ball that pushes it forward and makes it spin on one side. Um, this guy's got a trout-shaped head um, helmet, effectively, and then um, what this allows him to do is go very, very fast when he's skiing. So he's got a suit on, and that suit is very streamlined, so it detaches clean air. And what actually it does is, looking on this picture, at the so this could be water or air, is that this special shape here allows the air to detach cleanly off the back. So what he does is your normal leg would look like that. And what he does is he puts little inserts into and little inserts at the front into the rear and the front of his leg. And that allows him to travel at really, really fast, over a hundred miles an hour. Um, what you can do is have a try at this video, which is a little bit of a guide to about Lego and friction and air resistance. You can make some of your own notes, try and explain what happens in the pictures. It's just a short video. Um, we could also think about friction forces on a bike. So there are different places where friction actually occurs. Um, and also, of course, there's, there's air resistance and drag that act against you when you start to move. Now, there's a little worksheet to go for this lesson. This is an experiment where you look at the frictional forces between a, a block with rubber on, a block with brushed mat, and an aluminium sheet. And basically it's really simple, you pull with a force, a newton meter, you pull on a piece of string the block and as it moves across the desk you will see a force which is that one there. Now the weight, the total weight, so that's the block itself plus weight, so what you do is you add weights on top, of course as the weight, weights add on top the surface and the wood get pushed further and further together or the, of course the surface of the rubber, the brush mat, the aluminium and so the frictional forces go up. So you can work through the little tasks here, do some interlocking theory stuff. Uh, results are you get a straight line graph, you've got all the answers there, you can mark it through yourself. That's a little bit of help. If you struggle to plot graphs, what you've got to think about is um, if it's a scatter plot, so x and y won't necessarily be 1 and 3 or 2 and 4, they're not whole numbers. So what you have to do is work out what each little sub square of one of these big main squares is and make sure that you plot your crosses in between each one. So you've got to think about very carefully how you plot your graph. In this case, each little sub square is 0.2. So it's 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0.8, and 1. So have a think about how you're plotting your graph. If you've not got any graph paper, you can always find some on the internet which you can print off. Um, now the last bit I want to just talk about is the interlocking theory diagram. So here we've got surfaces that are really interlocked. These aren't interlocked as much. So the idea is it's like your fingers that you push them down. If the pressure is pushing down, the force pushing down, when you try and slide, you can't. So they interlock or they don't interlock. But if they're interlocking like this, then it's really hard to move them. Now, what you can do, of course, is use lubricant. And the lubricant, like oil, would fill in the ridges and valleys or crevices um, and that would stop 
um, the surfaces from interlocking. So this picture here shows lubrication in action. So you could uh, you could write a few notes about that. And then we're on to lesson four. So that will do. Um, I'm going to stop there, and then we can um, move on to lesson four.